YouTube, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. We're gonna be working on my Toyota Celica GTS today. I know you guys have been wanting to see a lot of this content. Currently, I have a check engine light and the VVTLI will not engage. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix this and what this code is. So let me go get the code scanner real quick. Okay, so we're gonna hit enter. Reading codes, please wait. You guys can see that. So secondary, that's because of stupid, uh, whatever it is, the air, don't worry about that one. Um, and then we're gonna hit scroll down. So this is gonna be rocker arm actuator system performance or or stuck bank one stored $10 generic. I don't know what that is. Um, so it's just those two. So this and this. So the code's gonna be 2646. More of a Honda thing, but it's actually for the VVTLI. So if you get this code, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix it in this video. Okay, so we're gonna actually take the Celica for a drive so I can show you what happens. Um, no VVTLI kicks on. So it comes up to like here and then stops right here. It doesn't go bomb all the way up there. Um, and I'll show you, I can explain the reason why, but I'd rather show you. So let's go for a drive. I'll show you guys how it doesn't hit. Uh, we do need get gas, so let's go get some gas too. Just got the classic white monster. Always good, like water. Mitchell.com, get that beautiful TRD bad. Swing by right there, still got them in stock, still amazing, still perfect, really looks good. Car is currently kind of dirty, but hey, we're gonna be cleaning it up this weekend. Still get that short shifter also at Mitchell.com, my absolute favorite. Look at that thing. Banging gears is so easy with that baby. Okay, get some of that 92 into the uh, GTS. So we'll get some gas, and then I'm gonna show you guys uh, what, what happens when the VVTLI doesn't work, and then I'll show you how to fix it. Look how sexy this car is. Dang, it is so beautiful. So uh, fill up with gas, and then we'll head into the, uh, head into the car. It, it's really slow without VVTLI. The uh, VVTLI, when you guys actually look at the horsepower curve, it's unbelievable, the difference. Um, Seriously unbelievable. It, it, it's like 130, 130, 140, and then jumps up to like 180. It's insane. So just in that little bit. So you can actually really feel it fall on its face when it doesn't have that. So I'll show you the without it, and then we'll go fix it, and I'll show you with it. So let's go ahead and jump back in the car. Okay, nice full tank of gas. Gotta put the seatbelt on. Car's not warmed up. So let's go warm the 2ZZ up, and I'll show you it doesn't hit lift, and then we'll fix the, that, that code I just read you. Okay, we have a fully warmed 2ZZ. Uh, we're gonna merge on the highway right here. So this is the problem. So this is what this is what we're not liking. So the car's like 100, what, 140 horsepower now. So we're in third gear and uh, I'm gonna smash it. So here we go, three, two, one, go. So VVTL I should be coming on here in a split second. See, so there's no VVTLI. It didn't go bomb. There was, it's just, it kind of actually falls on its face. It doesn't like it, it's not happy. So we're gonna head and do it one more time. So it should be VTL, I should come on right now. Here we go. And it just struggles, so it is not happy. So what we need to do is fix that code. And the way that we're gonna do that is what I'm gonna show you guys next. So let's head back to the uh, garage and uh, take this apart and I'll show you what we need to fix. So once you're back to your Celica, um, you're gonna wanna remove the battery. So 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Eh, I don't know what that one is. But we're gonna go, this is probably 10 millimeter. So let's remove the battery, take this out, including the battery um, mount here. And then you're also gonna wanna remove this sucker right here. This is gonna just the VVTLI cover. We're trying to access the VVTLI down there. Okay, um, so 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, uh, and I got the, and then you pull the battery out and then the 10 millimeters on those. Now what we're gonna do is take some uh, clamps and pull these little guys and bring them forward. You can just take them off. Easy enough, very, very easy. So just unclip, 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 and then just move. You can just set them up on top of the uh, cowling or just move out of the way. Okay, let's get this guy off. This is your um, oil pressure sensor guy. So if you're maybe having an issue, you can make sure that's connected. Uh, here's the oil pressure. Uh, uh, ground, sometimes that might be an issue. If that's not connected, ground, sometimes that might not be an issue. And then um, the actual VVTLI, solenoid. Solenoid, what a cool name. Wiggle that sucker off. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is two 10 millimeters and then one, two, three, four, five, slide this sucker out. Put a dirty 
not a Mishra, not a nice microfiber, but a dirty, icky microfiber down below here because it's going to leak some oil, especially since we just drove it and had the oil pressure up. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just set these little guys aside. There you go. See, there's just a little bit of oil coming out. This thing's a hot sucker, by the way. Woo, my hand is burning. Um, I do recommend getting it warm, though, because it makes the bolts come off easier. So good. There is still a strainer in here. Here's a little filter. You guys see this thing? That's it. And uh, you can't even see through it. It is, this is, oh my gosh, there's so much junk in here. Um, hold on one second here. So let me set this on the ground. My hand is on fire. So this is 100% the issue. Um, you can't even see through it. And there's junk in there. Um, this is a good time. We're going to do an oil change now. I've already done... Let me flip the camera around so you guys can see my ugly mug. I've already done how to do oil changes, so I'm not gonna do a how to do an oil change. There's a ton of them of me doing these on the 2ZZ. Super simple. Um, but what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna actually drain the oil right now. So let's go ahead and drain the oil from the 2ZZ. I already got the oil fill cap out. So let's go down below and I did get um, uh, a new oil filter and oil. So let's do that right now. This shouldn't take you very long. This is going to be about a once. No, this will be a two star difficulty because you got to remove the battery. So remove the battery. Um, pretty simple. Remove all the 10 millimeters. Pull this off. Now what you're going to want to use is a little bit of carb cleaner or um, I'd recommend using carb cleaner. And I would remove the solenoid. Clean it. I'd clean inside there. And then we are going to bring inside. We are going to go inside. I'm going to show you the filter. But you need to get this cleaned. Um, I have dropped the oil. And it is pretty dark, has 880 miles on the oil. Keep in mind this has a, a, a new uh, engine on it. Um, I've already done the braking period, so it's all fine. Um, to be honest, a lot of new cars, they just say, um, just drive them like you stole them. So uh, that being said, we've cleaned this, got the oil, got the junk out of there. What probably happened is with the junk in there, um, it's probably because there's some kind of RTV or sealant sil that got stuck in the, uh, um, the VVTLI filter solenoid. Uh, that being said, this is probably gonna be 99% of the time this is gonna be your issue if it's not working, or the lift bolts. But MWR has this motor, so this should have new lift bolts in there. I'm not gonna open up the valve cover today. Okay, that is the same filter. Look at that, it is perfect. You can see right through it. Literally, you can see right through it. Really scrubbed it down, uh, a little bit of um, carb cleaner to clean it all out. And then I use just like a little uh, old toothbrush. You can use an old toothbrush, plastic, and then just clean that off. There we go, that should be good. So let's inst put this back in. We'll seal up the side of this. I already cleaned all that in there, it looks really good. I already put the gasket back on. We'll put this guy right back in, we can do it together. Just like that. So now the filter's in. And it does go in one way, it'll sit just like that. Now, let's grab this, slide this guy back on. It's nice because there's these little um, guides for it, so as soon as you get those on, it'll be, it goes on real smooth. Let me, uh, like this, and then like that, and then you're on. Now we're gonna go get the 10 millimeters to do that. So once it's back on, put the uh, VVTLI connector right back on. So get this guy, plug that one back in right there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two for the grounds, and then you're good. Um, what we're gonna do now is take the hose lines and run them back. So let's run the hose back lines. I'll put the hoses back in for the um, intake manifold. All right, OEM oil filter. Time to unlock maximum performance, 5W30. You can run a lot of different oils on the 2ZZ. 5W30, where's my oil cap? I think it even says it on this one uh, right here. No, that one doesn't say it. Sometimes they say 5W30 cash roll on them. Um, that being said, 5W30 is great. You can use, there's a lot of different ones. I think you can use uh, 5W40, I think, and 0840, I can't remember. Um, but you can use a lot of different ones. You can go to Lotus and see that. This is one I use, this works really well. Okay, so fill the 2ZZ back with oil. I, I do recommend doing an oil change when you do this. So do do an oil change, it's good for it. It's, I don't know, $25 for oil. $10 for the filter and then the tools you already have. Uh, reinstall the battery, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Did all the 10s there. Put the little plastic thing back on. Um, it's good to go. And then, yeah, we should be done. So uh, we're gonna actually um, 
raise or lower the car back down and go for a drive now. So let's do that. All right, nice uh, start up. Oop. There we go. <laughs> I sprayed a little bit of that carb cleaner in the intake. Um, we're gonna let it sit here just for a little bit. Uh, it'll rev itself probably like at 1900 and then it'll drop down to 900 and then we'll go for the drive. Um, reset your marker so that you need to do it every 3,000 miles is when you should do these two ZZs. I know that some people do them at 10,000, do them at 3,000. You'll love yourself so your engine, it'll last longer. Coming, coming from the guy that has blown up, I don't know, five of these things. <laughs> it is, if you're going to leave it in a not be crazy like me, this is a good way to make your um, 2ZZ go for about 250,000 miles. Um, pretty normal, 250,000 to 300,000, then they'll let go. So if you guys are worried about the 2ZZ not lasting long, ignore my habits. I drive like a maniac. So um, that being said, they will, they will last quite a bit. 3,000 intervals um, and an oil change literally could be like $30 if you do it yourself. Um, which, and it also does just lubricate the engine, makes it better. So do change your oil. That being said, uh, the check engine light's gone. Um, this should be good. It should be good. Uh, I'll let you guys know. If it's not this, because we're going to see it here in a second. If it's not this, um, it will be the lift bolts, which it should not be the lift bolts because of that. So 99% of the time, it's not the lift bolt, especially on 2003 and later. And it is actually the uh, filter screen there. It just, as you guys saw, it was filthy. Um, and then once you get a nice clean one, uh, you'll be able to hit lift again. So let's go ahead and hit lift. All right, it's fully warm. Uh, we got a little merging power. Let's see if this goes. Oh yes, <laughs> that's it. Fixed it. So if that's the issue you guys have, 99% of the time it will be that valve. Uh, that little sensor can't get any oil, so it just shuts it off and says, "Too bad, you can't do that no more. Stop doing it. Stop going fast." So um, we'll go ahead and hit some more VVTLI, but easy fix. You guys can do this. Swing by Mistro.com. Get look at that thing. Look at that thing. Why don't you guys all have one of those? That looks so good. Um, do you need to really like let your after you change the oil, let your oil break in? No, that's not a thing. Uh, your oil immediately starts to break down. So you can hit VVTL all right away. Um, we did 4.5 miles. Uh, no oil leaks. All good. Always check for oil leaks. Uh, usually it's going to leak from your oil filter because you didn't tighten it enough, um, or from your oil plug. So we're going to go ahead and get on the highway here, VVTLI a couple more times, and then wrap it up. Uh, next video, we're probably going to be doing the carbon fiber dash um, from midstray.com. We'll be doing that one. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, some, show you guys how to get these little LEDs fixed in here. Uh, we'll be doing a radio as soon as my little wire harnessing comes back. And yeah, but I feel like the Celica is ready for its turbo kit. Um, reason I don't have the turbo kit is, is because I blew up the MR2, or started doing the MR2, uh, the, Started doing the Celica Turbo Kit because I blew up the MR2 and um, I was going to use that as a daily driver. So now I got to wait for my Evo to have its transmission done from uh, English. And then once we have that Evo, I'll put this guy in the garage and we'll start doing the turbo on the Celica. But of course, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of fun here. It's a little rainy, so it's hard to hook up, but we'll get some more go. We're here. Right when we get on that, we got third gear. Uh, this 664, I think it is, or C64, yeah, on this um, later model 2ZZ, really loves to rev high. So let's uh, we'll climb on over here to the merging power and we'll, we'll get up and we'll go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, that's quick. So I am gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here. Uh, I got errands to do right now. I hope you guys find this very helpful. If you have any questions or anything, comment down below. I will, I'll, I'll be, it'll be easy for me to help you. Um, this is this is why your VVTL I quit working. This is like 99% of the time. Every time I've had that issue, this is it. And the solenoids actually don't really go bad. I mean, they could, but they usually don't go bad. It's usually that filter is just clogged. I think the solenoid's life is, it's not a very hard job for the solenoid to work. The, cylinder, the solenoids is life. It should be the same life as 200,000 miles on the engine. So if you got 200,000 miles and you're not having VVTL, it's probably the same thing. Just pull this guy off, clean it. It's five bolts, put it back on, change your oil, and go fast. That's it. Make sure to like, subscribe, of course, swingbymissionary.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video.